Hi, I'm Sam. The folks at Head for the Cure asked a bunch of us about our stories, essentially why we participate in Head for the Cure. For me, brain cancers and brain tumors are personal. On my mother's side, five consecutive generations have had brain cancers or brain tumors. These haven't been parent to child, rather cousins, uncles, and aunts. My mother's brother, for example, had a brain tumor. On my father's side, my paternal grandfather's brother and cousin both died from brain cancers. For most people, this would be more than enough to be involved with Head for the Cure. Me? I'm stubborn. Then, in 1999, I experienced progressively worsening migraines, memory loss, and loss of my sense of direction. This came to a head in August when a ruptured aneurysm in my right parietal lobe, which is right about here, sent me into the emergency room. In the ER, the ruptured aneurysm was discovered along with a tennis ball-sized mass. The next day, the mass was removed and I woke up a couple of days later. The surgeon told me I didn't just have brain cancer, I had glioblastoma multiforme. Yeah, glioblastoma multiforme is a tongue twister. I've had more than 20 years of practice of saying glioblastoma multiforme. Most people just call it GBM. I get it. Nobody wants cancer. Even fewer want brain cancer. GBM, though, is the one you really, really, really don't want. There's no cure. There's not even an effective treatment. It's incurable. When I was diagnosed in 1999, the median lifespan of a GBM patient was about 18 months. Today, 21 years on, the median lifespan of a GBM patient is about 18 months, unchanged. Those months are full of radiation to the head, chemotherapy, and for many, a wearable tumor-treating field device such as Optune. Yeah, talk about fun. My first 18 months started with a clinical trial involving high-density neutron radiation to the head. There were 20 of us in the study. Within six months, I was the sole survivor. This was followed by two types of chemotherapy administered simultaneously. A third type of chemotherapy followed. This one was injected directly into the space between the hemispheres of my brain. At the same time, I received conventional radiation to the lower spine, which probably caused my subsequent testicular cancer. I guess this means I've had cancer of both brains. Once chemo was finished, I did a second clinical trial in which a radioactive isotope was injected into me to see how long it stayed in my body. A fourth type of chemotherapy followed, then there was gamma knife, a method of using a targeted beam of radiation as a surgical tool. Let's not forget a slew of, of spinal taps, more MRI and CT scans than I can count, and I know I'm leaving most of the good stuff out. Early on, I joined a support group for us brain cancer patients. Because I came to Seattle for treatment, I got to know a lot of brain cancer patients from all over the world. After treatment, most of them went home and dropped out of touch, so I lost track of them. Many of the ones with whom I did keep in touch with are now gone. It's what happens when you know brain cancer patients. Too many of us die. So about five years ago, I started a list. After about 50 names, I stopped updating the list. This was around three years ago. Personally, I'm tired of going to my friend's funerals. I could be selfish and say I'm doing Head for the Cure for me, or slightly less selfish and say I'm doing this for my friends. In reality, I'm doing this so someday no one will have to walk this path.